Hello, uh, today I'm going to show you how to do uh, a garter stitch heel. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions when I show off my socks that have this heel. Uh, it's basically just a heel flap and gusset type of heel, but I do gar garter rows instead of stockinette or I have partridge or some slip stitch heel pattern. I usually just go for this garter because I think it's a fun texture. Uh, it's quick and easy. So I just wanted to make a quick tutorial on how to do this heel. And I am up to the point where I'm going to put in the heel on the second sock. So I'm going to show you step by step how I do this. So this is uh, just a basic vanilla sock pattern. Uh, nothing fancy. I have 64 stitches on the needles now. So for doing your heels, you work with half of your stitches. I always do my socks on TPNs, but you can do this if you do magic loop or any other needles of your choice for knitting heels. But I'm going to go ahead and show this with my DPNs. This is the yarn that I'm going to use for my heel. I just start knitting. And I'm going to work across the second needle as well. And put all the 32 stitches on one needle. So, I'm at my last stitch. So when I reach my last stitch, I put the yarn in front and I slip the last stitch and then I turn. And then you knit that last stitch as your first stitch on the wrong side. And you just knit. Now I'm at my last stitch again and I bring my yarn to the front and I slip the last stitch and then I turn. So now we have one row of garter stitch for our heel. And we're going to do this uh, until we have 16 garter stitches, garter rows for the heel. Now I'm at, the, I'm at the last stitch again, so I put the yarn in front and slip the last stitch and turn.
slip the last stitch with yarn in front and turn. Okay, so now I have done all the garter rows for the heel. So I, since I had 32 stitches on my needles, I did 32 rows. You do the same amount of rows as you have stitches on your needles. So doing 32 rows resulted in 16 garter stitches, garter ridges for my heel. So I've done all of that and I always, like I said, you knit to the end until you have one stitch left. You bring your yarn in front and you slip the last stitch and that makes a really nice edge for you to pick up stitches later. But now uh, I'm at the point where I'm going to turn the heel and what I mean by turning the heel is, you can see it here on the finished sock, so you're basically shaping your heel. This is the back of your heel and this is underneath your foot. So you're gonna shape your heel like this. So, here we go. Um, the number of stitches that I'm using are, cal are calculated uh, from the fact that I have 32 stitches on my needles. If you have more or less stitches, you're going to have to do some calculations and I will try to uh, find a good source and link it down below this video, but I'm just going to go for it. Uh, just know that I'm working with 32 stitches. So the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to knit 18. Okay, I've knit 18 and then I'm going to do slip, slip, knit, slip, slip and knit. Oops, I didn't go through all the threads. Slip, slip, knit and then knit one. And now here I have Eleven stitches that I haven't worked, <clears throat> and I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna slip the first stitch on the wrong side with my yarn in front. So you have your working yarn in the front of your work, you slip the first stitch like this, and then you bring it to the back. And then you purl. And you purl, you slip one and then you purl five and then you purl two together. Purl two together and then you purl one and then you should have eleven stitches here. I have 11 that I haven't worked and then I'm going to turn my work and work the right side again. So again I slip my first stitch and I do this until I have one stitch before this big gap here. So there's a gap. You can see it pretty clearly. So then I do slip, slip, knit again. Slip, slip, knit, and knit one. Turn. Now you're working on the wrong side. 
have your yarn in front of your in front of your work slip one move the yarn to the back and purl you purl until you are one stitch away from that big gap and you purl that stitch with the next one and then you purl one more you turn your work and repeat and you do this until you have worked all the way across on both sides and you have no more gaps between your stitches so I'm gonna do that and then I'll be back to show you what I do next. So I'm almost done turning my heel. Uh, I only have one stitch left before the gap on each side. So on my last row, this is what I do. I slip the first stitch and then I knit across to that to one stitch before the gap here we go I have two stitches left and then I do a slip slip knit and usually you're doing a slip slip knit and then you're knitting one extra but since this is the end of your heel turns you just do the slip slip knit and then you turn and you do the same thing on the wrong side. And I do Norwegian purling. You can, of course, do any purling method that you find the most comfortable. But this is what I was taught in school. And I've always done this method of purling. It just comes very naturally to me. But you do you and I'll do me. That's how it works the best. Anyway, I'm almost there. Okay, I'm at my last two stitches and then I just pull those two together. Pull them together. Here we go. And you have your heel turn. So this is the, the foot like underneath your heel and this is the heel itself and here you can see the turn. So now <coughs> I'm done with my heel so I'm just gonna cut this yarn and put it aside. This is just some Regia yarn in this dark purple. So now I have done my heel in garter and I've turned the heel and I have I have 18 stitches here. So half of 18 is 9 as we know. Uh, and now I'm going to take the yarn that I'm using for the main sock and I'm gonna pick up 16 stitches here on the side into my slipped stitches so I'm gonna go into here the first one you always go you can see there are two legs so it looks like you're picking up like going under two stitches but you're actually just going under one but it has this V. And you need to pick up both legs and then you just take your working yarn and you just pick up the net.
just dive into these stitches and uh, it's really easy to see where you're supposed to go in. So this is one of the reasons why I really like slipping the last stitch with yarn in front. A lot of patterns tell you to slip the first stitch, uh, but I always slip the last stitch and put my yarn in front because it makes it really easy to pick up for your gusset. Actually, I have 17. <laughs> uh, I think it's because I picked up one extra stitch here, and that's fine. Um, it doesn't really matter if you have one extra or one less. It, it's okay. So, uh, I'm just going to continue with this, and I'm going to knit half of these. So, nine. Okay, you have half done, um, and then I knit across the rest of the stitches. And then I continue and pick up, because I picked up 17 on the other side, I'm going to pick up 17 here as well. It needs to be matchy matchy. Okay, at the end I picked up all the stitches and then I'm just gonna and I'm gonna knit across this uh, set of stitches because my beginning of row is now at the center on, like underneath your leg, leg, foot, <laughs> underneath your foot, like in the middle of your heel turn, that's where you start your rows. So I'm gonna knit to that point. Here we go. Now we are at the beginning of a row. So, uh, you have 16 stitches on each of the top needles, which are on the top of your foot. And then you have uh, 26 on each of these. You have half of the heel turns, which were 9, and then you picked up 17 for the gusset on each side. So you, ha you have 26, 26, 16, and 16. And now you have a... It looks like a mouth. <laughs> well, you have your heel flap and your heel turn. And now you are ready to do the de decreases for your gusset. I'm just going to do one row of that and show you. Okay, so I'm going to do the first decrease on my gusset now. So I knit across these 26 stitches until I have three stitches left on my needle. So I knit 23. Now I have three stitches left here and then I do knit two together and knit one. You do nothing 
on your top of foot and just knit across these 16 stitches. And on the next needle as well. Like I said, you can do this on magic loop. I'm just a DPN kind of person. I always do my socks on DPNs, but you can de definitely just do your thing on magic loop if that's your preferred method of making socks. Okay, so now I've knit across the two needles on the top of the foot. Now I'm at another decrease point and I knit one and then I do a slip slip knit on this side. Slip slip knit and knit to the end of this needle. So now we have completed our first row of decreases for the gusset and uh, I do my decreases every other no row so my next row I will just knit all the stitches I'll just knit across and then when I reach this point again I'll do my decrease knit across do a decrease knit and then knit one full row and you do this until you have 16 stitches on every single needle so you already have 16 here but you decrease here and here until you have 16 16 16 16 and then you just knit 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 until you are ready for your toe so this is basically where we are now with the other sock. We are doing these decreases here on the gusset of the foot. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Uh, like I said, uh, I've done these garter heels a few times uh, and I always get questions about them. And I'm always saying, oh, it's just like a regular heel flap and gusset, but I do the heel flap in garter stitch instead of, you know, any other heel pattern. So it's basically, if you have uh, your favorite sock recipe, your favorite sock pattern, you can substitute this heel for, you know, you can substitute the heel in the pattern for this sock if you are interested. Uh, I find that they fit really well. The garter is a bit more forgiving and like it's, it has a good stretch but it bounces back really easily. So I think it's perfect for, I think garter uh, heels are really nice and I like having a bit of a different texture in my socks. I think it's fun and if you use like if you're using self striping yarn and you don't want to interrupt uh, the striping sequence you can just you know do like I did here and just throw in contrasting heels and toes. Um, this is dark purple like I said before. Uh, it looks a little bit black on camera but yeah so this is how we do it. So I hope you like this little tutorial of mine. I've never done one before. And if you use it, please let me know. I would love to see your socks. And if you have any questions, just comment below and I will include some links in the description box of uh, simple and easy and hopefully free sock patterns that you can use to get you going. Uh, and yeah, have fun 
knitting. Bye.